I'm so very sorry, Harriet. But why should you condole me? You do not think I care about Mr. Frank Churchill? There was a time, and not very distant either, when you gave me a reason to believe that you did care about him. Him? <laughs> Never. Dear Miss Woodhouse, how could you so mistake me? Harriet, what do you mean? I should not have thought it possible that you could have misunderstood me. But you told me that greater things had happened. That there had been matches of greater disparity. Those were your very words, Miss Woodhouse. Harriet, let us understand each other now, without possibility of further mistake. Are you speaking of Mr. Knightley? Of course. But I thought you knew. But the service Mr. Churchill rendered you in protecting you from the gypsies. Oh, no! It's not the gypsies. No. I was thinking of a much more precious circumstance. Of Mr. Knightley's coming and asking me to dance when Mr. Elton would not stand up with me. Good God. And have you any idea of Mr. Knightley's returning your affection? I must say that I have. He has shown me sweetness and kindness. And at Donwell, he took great pains to describe to me some particulars of the management of his tenant farms. We were interrupted, but before we were, he seemed almost to be asking me if my affections were engaged. Yes, but is it possible that he might have been alluding to Mr. Martin? That he might have had Mr. Martin's interest in view? You think of Mr. Knightley for yourself. <laughs> Harriet. I, I do not flatter myself with any idea of his attachment to me. Harriet. I should have considered it too great a presumption even to think of him but for you. Harriet. I know that he is the last man who would intentionally give any woman the idea of his feeling more for her than he does so. If you believe he loves you. I refuse Mr. Martin because of you. Because it 